morning. Good morning. <laughs> so we left the van up there and what's really cool about where we're staying is it's the last buildings before this national park here. So we did have to go down the compound, down the steps. You can't even see the top. <laughs> really beautiful place though. Got like a soccer field, mossy walls. Yes, over here, we'll just cut down and back up into the forest basically. Just have to go like a block outside of the compound. That's as far as we've explored, so. This yeah. is supposed to be like a pretty gnarly hike, right? Yeah, but it says that it's pretty hard, intense. Yeah. But it's nothing that we haven't done already. We've done hikes like that before, yeah. even with less mileage. Yeah, not so, right next to a city though. Rio right is amazing to have this stuff right here. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be as intense as, yeah, as to get worried about it. But, no, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not worried. I just like to, Danny likes to think get about excited. how epic it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, for example, it's like this one part that you can either go rock climbing up, or apparently there's a scramble and you don't need a guide for that part. But it still looks pretty exciting, so. Gonna be a cool hike here. Should be some monkeys and stuff. Let's check it out, huh? Yep, let's go. This is called Pedra de Gaveta. I think we're almost to the trailhead. <laughs> still in society here. And it's already pretty dang steep. I wanted to mention that if you've seen that huge rock that we're standing underneath, that's where we're going up. Crazy. All right, we made it to the trailhead. National Park of Tijuca. So it looks like we will be doing this travesia, as they say in Spanish. And then here might be the exciting part up. <laughs> And then there's two good spots up top. Wow, that's double what I expected. So we just had to do a quick sign in for how many people we are and if we're with a guide and our phone number, that's it. But there was a, I think they're just guards. At least, I don't know. Yeah, just to make sure that there's no domesticated animals coming in. Monkeys right above us. This guy's a little close, huh? Oh, he's drinking water out of that. Oh, now you know where monkeys get their water, huh? Yeah. What the heck? If you saw the jackfruit when we were in Iguazu, you know that this is just monkey central. <laughs> just such a crazy fruit. This thing blows my mind that it just grows out of the tree trunk. I've never seen anything like that. Except for cacao. Cacao's cacao, like that for chocolate. Yeah. Jungles like this, it even though there's so many things that are decomposing on the floor, it happens too fast. So the so the soil tends to be a little bit less fertile. But in the Amazon, there's like something, oh, oh. In the Amazon, the um, indigenous people also set fires, controlled burns. They don't do it all the way to the bottom of the trunk. All of the ash going down makes the area around the Amazon really fertile, which doesn't really happen here, but it's pretty cool, I thought. <laughs> wow, so this hike has been relentlessly uphill. Looks like we're about halfway. Gotta take the hat off, it's too hot. So hot. Sweating like a dog. There, she says she's got people without shoes. Three people without shoes. What? We came around this corner over here and we've been working up this hill now. That's a steep drop off there. We know the other side of this hill where we came from is pretty steep and it feels like not a place you could just find a random way up. <laughs> For one, the jungle, but you know I've tried that like in Colombia. <laughs> For two, this should all come up here to another steep section. So really gorgeous hike, really geographically interesting. How big is that? Like as long as your pinky finger. I think it's as long as my finger. As long as your next finger. Yeah. That was that first kind of exciting part, but this is really cool, like a cave under this rock here. See? <laughs> pretty wild trail, you kind of got to find it pretty well. But we do have all trails and maps made to look at. All trails free edition. Yeah, I don't like to subscribe to all trails because honestly, one time they interviewed me. I'm a iPhone programmer, you know, and I had this app 
called airtime. Take your phone in your pocket when you BMX or whatever, and it would tell you how high you were going in the air based on the accelerometer in the phone it can detect the direction of down and in which direction you're accelerating using the gyroscope too. You do the dot product of those two vectors, and if it's zero, you're not feeling acceleration down. That's when you're in free fall. Time equals 9.8 AT squared or whatever. You can calculate how high you went in the air, assuming you took off and landed at the same altitude. Yeah, so All Trails kind of interviewed me for their All Snow app, which is a snow All Trails thing. And they said they wanted to do a similar feature. I told him how it worked. He said they were interested in hiring me. Like, that's why I told him, but never heard back from him. So I'm like, oh, man, why did I reveal my secrets? Well, now you know too. <laughs> yeah, a little waterfall. Could be pee from above. I was gonna put it on my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Wow, so this part here that is feeling like we're rock climbing now, but we're also seeing the view. Yeah, I did almost fall on that last bit, but I grabbed a handhold last second because my, my foot slid out. So luckily I had three points of contact all the time. Feels like such nature here, just right outside of Rio. But honestly, I think on that last section, we went the wrong way. <laughs> there was a local. I was looking at all trails and I was like, I think it's this way. But the trail did curve that way right after it. But we definitely went the hard way. I think it's a good early humbling experience. Because if we start going the wrong way up a cliff up here, we'll know to turn around and find the better way. <laughs> I think the most exciting section will be up ahead here. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of people doing it to uh, look at for advice. This hike is hard compared to the Ausangate trick we did. Oh my god, we did that with a cat and a dog. Total elevation change, something like 16,000 feet over four days. Sleeping up above 16,000 feet every night. And we did it with a cat and a dog, and we had to carry the dog for a couple of miles. Got a view right here. What's the view of? Come on. Oh my god, you know what that is over there? I think that's where they do the hang gliding from. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is that up in the tree? Oh, that's where we're going. Oh my God, oh my God, look at that thing, what? Oh my God. I don't think there's anything in the tree actually. Babe, we're going up there. That seems really far. <laughs> wow, sounds like we're getting to the interesting part. Ah, this is the good part. Yeah. So you can either take ropes here. I got a little store even. And you can go up directly rock climbing or right here to the right. So not too bad. Definitely some heights to it. Wow. So we have come to the patient portion of the hike. I am shaking. <laughs> But that part's definitely the rock climbing. This part, if you could just go up it quick, would it be that bad? Yeah. But we just gotta be patient. We just gotta be patient. Mm. Oh, biggie. Mm. That was so intense back there. The thing that was intense wasn't honestly the climbing part. It was super mellow. Like, I mean, if you're in a climbing gym, that's below the, the bottom level on a climbing gym, you know? The whole time, it's a good angle, so I didn't feel scared, honestly. You gotta be a bit of a climber at that part, yeah. It was kind of fun, though, to be climbing again. But yeah, the worst part back there, those guides were like, you want an Uber? And like, they charge money, we didn't even bring money. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this dude, this dude with his Speedo on, and he's just like standing in the middle of the path, which is pretty common. Whoa. I can handle this, this is nice, this is fun. <laughs> So, what a cool hike. We made it somewhere, huh? Dang. So, I remember you can go chill to the right or to the left. I can't believe we made it up here, huh? Yeah, good job. Best restaurant in town, huh? Only serving PBJs though, Brazil nuts.
So this is the rainforest in the middle of the city. Beautiful. A city over here, rainforest. We can see Cristal and Tarki and Sugarloaf. Oh yeah, we gotta go do that Sugarloaf, Copacabana, Ipanema, the whole city. And that's the favela right there on the hill. Danny, come back here, get out of there. So this spot, I guess, is a place where some controversial <laughs> social media posts come from because people scoot really, really close to the edge and uh, it's a little life-threatening. And also the person taking the picture has to scoot pretty close to the edge. Wow, yeah, sweet. I mean, it's, it's kind of deadly. I mean, it looks deadly and it's kind of deadly. Yeah, but it is a beautiful spot to sit and have lunch. I'm so glad we spent some time here just relaxing. It was great. The crazy Danny scoot scooted towards the edge. What a good payoff for a hike though. I think this has got to be one of my all-time favorite hikes. It's definitely got that unique section where you're climbing a little bit and just the views up here. You're on this huge rock that for days I've been checking out. We're actually sleeping right below this rock, which for me, that's the best possible scenario. Sleep in the van somewhere, wake up, do the thing right next to you. Epic. This is so good. Emily! <laughs> Got a little bonus, little bonus side hike up to the other top here. So here they got some climbing ropes set up at the very top. Man, stunning view on this side. And I guess I can make it out to a rock over here. This little side part was one of the sketchiest parts. I think it was the sketchiest thing I've done yet because you actually had to go down a rope, lean back at this part, and it was like pretty much vertical. So, and there was a chain. I took the chain because I thought, Psh, I ain't paying for no ropes. But check this out. What a good payoff here. Thanks for coming up the Pedra de Gaveo with us. Like I said, if you sleep somewhere in a van, you gotta do the thing you wake up next to. It always turns out to be a good idea. Damn. Well, I'll catch you at the bottom. How was it? Good. But I already said on the camera, I'll see you back at the van. <laughs> okay, we'll see you back at the van. Almost back. Look at that huge rock up there. Oh my God. We were way on top of that thing. Probably even higher than that part. I can't wait to put my feet up. Back to the van. And first thing, having to play with the animals. <laughs> Look at this little boy. And this is some people from Ecuador with a really big truck. They self-built this thing. It's got AC and it says AC on the front. It must be a jack, but that thing is built. Look at this beauty. Oh, I love it. They have an AC unit mounted on the wall in there. Very DIY. And over here, they kind of got the prime spot, honestly. But we're happy where we are. Look at this guy. Graham. Good to be home, huh? Yeah, we just walked from our house to that trail. Not many people could do that. God, Grandma's so cute, right? Standing up, sniffing flowers. Back to the van, but we need some water. We got the water filter out. Good job, babe. Good job, babe. <laughs> Grammy. Oh my god, we are so beat after that hike and we were gonna go out for dinner and maybe go pick it up, walk the dog there, decided just to get delivery. <laughs> Delivery guy finally came. <laughs> Let's see, so this is like a Japanese restaurant over here. And of course, Emily's vegan, we got some good veg stuff. Yes. As well as I got a poke bowl. So on our hike, we met a guy, an Italian guy from Rio de Janeiro, who told us that we should try the local soda, you know? Yeah. So we got one of the local sodas. It's made out of the guarana. Guarana is mixed with the acai, and that's what makes it sweeter. <laughs> Guess how many people they thought that our meal was for? Four. <laughs> Whoa, look at this poke bowl! Mm. Oh, that does look really, really good. I'm so hungry. 
We did not eat much today, but he said that this stuff is on par with Coca-Cola sales here. Guarana, made out of these cool berries called Guarana. That apparently they look like eyes. He said it's pretty crazy um, how much it looks like an eye. Oh, this is the vegetarian combo. I feel like I'm gonna drop it or something. This is the veggie combo. That is a beaut. Wow. We're gonna share that. Yeah. Well, what do you got there? And I've got the yummy Ooh, soba. You wanna open it? Ooh, Ooh. noodles. It yeah. looks good. It might be really tasty. Who knows? I'm sure but it's really tasty. That veggie combo and this poke bowl will look amazing. And what do we got? Show you? Let's try this Show stuff. You? Let's try this guarana first. Okay. Teriyaki. Oh my God. Let's see what Emily says. Bubble gum. <laughs> she, she was like, I don't like how the acai tastes like bubble gum. But yeah, it was this stuff in the acai, yeah. huh? Yeah, it's bubble gum. It's different than like bubble gum, but. No, it's bubble gum. It's like similar. I, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we hope you're really enjoying Rio. I think we're going to go enjoy this food. morning working and I've been editing a video non-stop and now it's oh my gosh I thought it was lunchtime it's four o'clock though <laughs> so we're gonna stop for lunchtime I'm gonna make us some grilled cheese but while I was making them I figured I could tell you guys some of my process I guess whenever I'm editing and typically what work days are like for us so last night we knew we were going to be working all day today so we decided to get some easy to cook stuff we don't really want to stop too much and have to cook elaborate meals so now we're just gonna have some grilled cheese my editing days usually start a couple days before actually I have to start a couple days before to import the video onto Final Cut Pro and then I do that on Danny's laptop because my laptop it would take literally all day if I tried to do it on mine. It takes a little while for it to uh, import completely. I use an SSD external hard drive so that I can use Final Cut Pro on my computer and also Danny's computer because my computer is kind of old and it just takes a while to do more important things like importing and when the video is done to export it. So after everything's imported and rendered, I start the editing process. I just edit all of the clips down, take out the clips that don't really look that good, fix their orientation if I have to, stuff like that. That's most of my editing process. That takes like almost all of the day. <laughs> so cutting everything down into one nice long video. We usually start with about an hour of footage before I cut it down into the 16 to 20 something minute videos that you guys watch. After I edit all the clips down and I figure out what the video is mostly about, I will start to do some voiceovers and then I'm going to add the music. So th at this point, I also just make sure that all of the rest of the volumes are perfect. So I move up the volume and down the volume if, we, if our faces weren't very close to the microphone and stuff like that. After I'm finished all of that, I'll watch it one final time, make sure that everything looks how I want it to look, and then I'll show it over to Danny and he'll watch it and give me some notes and if he doesn't like the way he looked in something, if he thinks like, oh, I know I had a better drone shot, then I'll add that stuff. This is also the time where we both start thinking about what the title and the thumbnail are going to be. The title and the thumbnail is pretty much, is probably one of the most important parts of the video because without a good title and thumbnail, no one's gonna be able to see it. Danny usually does the title and the thumbnail, but I give him all of what I think it should be. We spitball back and forth to talk about the title and we just figure it out from there. The thumbnail, it can take anywhere from five or 10 minutes to hours to do the thumbnail. So that is a really important thing that Danny does for the videos. And the pets on these working days, <laughs> they're usually asleep, but they both come with me in the morning to go for a walk. We go on a couple of walks all day. <laughs> But luckily, Sombrita, oh my gosh, went to the dog sitter yesterday, so she's still a little bit tired from that. These are like pretty boring days for both of the pets. We let Sombrita out on the leash sometimes on her own, and she loves exploring that way too. 
And since I import all my clips before I even start the project, on the days where I know it's a super long video and it's gonna be really, really hard, Danny helps me out a lot more by making all the food. Typically, it takes up anywhere from five to 10 hours to make a video. That's not even including the stuff that we film or just getting clips off of the, the cameras and phones and charging up the cameras and phones, figuring out what we're going to do in the video and stuff like that. Traveling is what we want to do and it's just awesome to be able to show all the cool places and a realistic view of the places that we go. We typically work on Wednesdays and Saturdays, the day before the video comes out. I wish I was doing it a little bit sooner, but it's kind of nice working on Saturdays because then we can beat the crowds. And if I know that we're in a place with good Wi-Fi or if we're just chilling out for a little bit longer, I do get to get ahead. But I, t I do really like working on the weekends so that we can spend the week beating the crowds. So after this, back to work. When we built our van, we weren't really thinking about where we were going to work in the van because we weren't really going to work that much. <laughs> but as we have evolved in the last four years, we do both work in here. So I usually work at the pullout table on the bed or where Danny's working right now in the driver's seat facing the passenger seat window because I really like having a window where I work so I can see out, it's nice and it gives me a little bit less rectangle eyes that just stare at a computer screen all day. Oh, the time has come. Emily's working on the video. This is my license to go check out the Brazilian Steakhouse. I've only been to one ever, like in the USA, the Fogo de Chao. I think I went on my birthday some year. And that place was epic, how they're just bringing around the meats, bringing around the meats. They do have a Fogo de Chao here, which is kind of funny, but I want to go to the local one, you know, and it seems like the highest recommended one around here is called Moselin. Maybe Mosellin, I'm not sure. It's got like 4.8 stars, 8,000 reviews. This is gonna be good. The price with promotional offer should be 30 bucks. That'll be all you can eat meats and then they give you like a menu that you can get salads and uh, you know, different side items, sushis and stuff too. One of the best parts about traveling, you know, checking out the local foods. So let's grab an Uber and go check it out. Okay, Grammy, you be good. Yes. Oh my god, the Mosellin Steakhouse is amazing. I decided to walk back for good reason. And so on the way there, the taxi driver had said to me, Oh, Mosellin's okay. And I think maybe he was trying to set my expectations low. But wow, I don't think he knew that I live with a vegan. <laughs> that was pretty special. So you basically you just sit down and you know they give you these two menus. One was for salads, one was for sides. And of course I had to Google Translate that. I said, I'm gonna get some onion rings, a crazy salad. And I'm glad I didn't order too many sides because that at that point was basically plenty of sides. Well, I also got the sashimi. I love salmon sashimi and here in Brazil, it is so flavorful. Oh my God, really good salmon sashimi. I was thinking about getting some bread, but you know, I didn't want to get too full. I mean, the first thing he brings around is some pork, some sausages. I was like, just give me a bit. And they don't seem to understand a little bit, or I really wonder what the normal amount would be. <laughs> I think I got the meat sweats. So I brought around at one point a plate of chicken hearts. And I thought, well, you know, I'll try one of them, but definitely don't want to get 20 or something. <laughs> it was incredible, you guys. Oh my God, and it wasn't just pork they brought. They brought pork, they brought better pork, they brought the best pork, it was so good. And they had some beef, better beef, even better beef. I had to try the chicken and it was actually bomb. I think, you know, it's really well made. Coming out quick, plenty of food. Had to eventually tap out. This might be the last one. It was a bit of a challenge. 
and I have burped a lot on the way back. <laughs> I overate for sure, but uh, not to make myself sick or anything like Thanksgiving, you know. <laughs> What a great experience. I really recommend that Mussolini Steakhouse. On the way out, get to talking with the manager. The manager gave me a whole tour of the place. This is bonito. It's bomb. Vino. Oh, vino. Uh huh. This is. Oh. Todos os copos. Também vindo para levar. Oh my God, enorme. He says, oh, you know, this room fits 50 people. This is a bunch of orchids on the wall in the back room. He showed me all the wines. Oh, even more wines. He's got some from the States, he says, up here. The highlight of the tour, 100%. Checking out that kitchen. Oh, my God. Jeez, they had a lot of meat on that grill. Throwing some other meat in a huge refrigerator. That was wild. Really had to try a Brazilian steakhouse while we were here. So 100% loved that experience. This walk back has been super nice. Going by the river there. Actually, there were these guys fishing which with huge fishing nets. They were throwing off the bridge. They would expand. Woo! Well, I thought I did pretty well finishing all the food that I had them bring around, which is definitely one of the challenges at that kind of place. After all that meat, I think I'm definitely going vegan for a while. Don't mind at all. And Emily's so great for not caring, you know, that I want to try the local thing over here. But uh, I'm good. I'm good on meat. I'm good on fish. I'm good on chicken. Ooh, I'll have to go eat some plants for a while. <laughs> My God. But there's chickens back here. Can I pitch you? I'll go vegan. <laughs> oh, I can't even get in. Oh, oh my God. Tell me about it. Oh, it was so good, babe. But I want to go vegan again. Like for real? Like for a couple of days, oh, I mean. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so full and sweaty. I got to make a coffee. <laughs> oh, got to have a coffee after a big meal. There's a monkey, you say, right there? Yeah. So, Sombrito is a little bit curious about the monkey. Oh, there he is. Whoa. Great. Sombrito Graham, let's go over here, guys. Come on. Sombrito Bean. A mi lado. Oh, she's being good. Muy buena. She's a little bit used to monkeys after... Uh, so many days here. Oh, what's up, what's up there, Emily? Yeah, this camp spot is killer now. We got the good spot with the view here. But Instagram versus reality aspect, they have so much random stuff over here. What is going on? I like this gate though that goes like, just goes nowhere. Who the bomb? Who the bomb? me. You're so curious, somebody. Huh, we'll see you in Rio next time. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support us in Rio de Janeiro, head over to our Patreon. Yeah, thanks Bye. guys. See you next time.